Blog Talk Radio. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Xandermonium with me, Xandra Gibb, the talk show that gets you talking. We're going to be with you for the next hour, hoping to keep you interested. It's very cold here in New York City. My nipples are hard because of the coldness. Time to unpack the thermals and whack up that thermostat methinks. Well, my guests Today are Antonio Santini and Dan Sickles, who are, among other things, filmmakers. And they're in the process of making a documentary called Mala Mala about transsexual drag, transsexual and drag youth in Puerto Rico. And so today we're going to discuss this and the many other pies that these two talented people have their fingers in. Oh, and did I mention that I've worked with them both too? So, without further ado, I give you Antonio Santini and Dan Sickles. Hello, Hello, guys. Xander. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Good. We uh, we just got back to Puerto Rico yesterday, and I know uh, I'm very jealous. It's like the mid '80s. Yeah, it's like in the mid '80s here, so we're oh, we're taking it right now. Yeah. Are you, and you're sitting by the pool naked. I I, I hear. Oh, I'm I'm usually in the buff in Puerto Rico. If it's anything above the mid seventies, you know, clothes are just not an option. Well, I, I think it's the best way to be, but um, with a body like mine, no. But with a body like yours, absolutely, definitely. Well, that is very generous of you to say, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a while since I've uh, kind of spoken with you both, and um, I know that you're uh, working on a on a, a movie project at the moment called Mala Mala, but. Let's kind of uh, just uh, back up a little bit so people can get an idea of, of how we all know each other. Um, a couple of years ago, I worked on a, on a film that um, Antonio was making, um, a short comedy short uh, called The Killer Tranny, which kind of brought a lot of attention for all of us, even from as far as the field as China and France, which was, you know, not all of the attention was kind of uh, welcomed, shall we say, but that's how we kind of all, well, that's how I met you two, but you two kind of knew each other before that. Yeah, well, and Antonio and I met each other at NYU, um, and we were, we were going to separate schools. I was studying acting, and Antonio was in the school of individual life study, and uh, yeah, I guess we met sophomore year and kind of started right. organically working together, and then I met you through... Killer Tranny, of course, on set. That's right. That's right. And so, and so you're both working on the last stage of Mala Mala now. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, what that project is, uh, what it's about, and, and where it all started. Where did it come from? Um, well, Mala Mala has a history that begins with... Um, a short documentary that we filmed in Austin about Maggie McMuffins, someone that we met right. when we were down, down there at a film festival. And Maggie was someone who we saw perform as a drag queen, and we became interested in seeing what was behind her performance on stage. And what we discovered was an entire story of transitioning into right. an adult, a father, and a transsexual, and that those days that we spent in Austin inspired us to keep looking into this story and looking into similar stories. Right. And it just so happened that someone mm. that I had gone to high school with um, was becoming was on her way to becoming one of the island's top drag queens. So right. Dan and me were like, okay, we got to go. And we, and we made to our first trip. <laughs> yeah. I, and so we made just, our first trip to Puerto Rico. Because on the outside looking in, this has kind of been um, uh, like a, a progressive uh, move onwards for you. Because like the first movie I worked with, with you on was, was had, a, had some drag in it. And the main protagonist who I played w w was a drag queen. And I think... The message, I think people got kind of like different messages from that. And then you went on to, to do a more documentary style uh, piece uh, on, 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 on the lovely Maggie. And now you've gone to like a full 
film um, around the subject issue? Because for me, for me, uh, from the outside looking in, you, it, it seems your kind of your interest level and your knowledge level has changed exponentially. Would you agree with that? I, yeah, I think so, and I think that like our interests have, de- have definitely grown uh, in in a very in a very organic way. I mean, like for us, like it definitely started with. Uh, well, I know that for, for Antonio, it definitely started with taking a character like Killer Tranny and and using it to uh, you know inspire and teach lessons that I that I find you know like right right inherent in that uh in that sketch. But um, for us, I mean, like we it, it definitely grew into curiosity about like what what is this culture and like what is it all about? And because we didn't really know much about it, so it was like, well, in learning about it, like let's let's make a movie about it. Um, right. Kind of discovering it all together, and I mean, like for us too, uh, you know, trans is 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 in my mind. It, you you can't really get further. You can't get more other, I think, than than trans yeah. than like kind yeah. of like crossing that that divide on the on the gender binary. Um, so so like all so all of that like really like fed our motivation um, and our passion for this project because it, it it really was curiosity that that was like right. kind of the the seed of it. I, I hear um, that. Sorry, I think the, I'm with making this. The, sorry, the thing with making this movie, I think, is that because we started really on the outside of the community, you know, we showed right. up at one subject's house literally one day, and from and it's been a year since then. The whole process has been a process of exploring and discovering. So, in a way, it really has been. Um, it, it, if you trace it back, it's really just been a process of us just navigating Puerto Rico and trying to figure out what this community is about. It's right. been a process of learning. And I think at finally now we're in a place where we really do feel like we have a full grasp on the community and we feel very confident in right. all the different people that we know from it. And we know where they're coming from and we know what they want and we know things that they may not know themselves. So, so how so how, Dan? How did you end up being involved in this project? Because I know that you you and um, you and Antonio have worked together, but but I get the impression that your uh, background has been fundamentally in like acting and writing. Um, wh- mm-hmm. How did you kind of come on board as a filmmaker? Well, I mean, like for, for me, I I was doing a lot of acting. I graduated from NYU in 2010, and I was doing a lot of acting uh, right after that, like a, in a, in a bunch of off Broadway theater. Um, which was which was great, and uh, and I and I kind of stopped that for a sec, and immediately kind of taking immediately after taking a break, I was offered a job helping production on this film called Price Check, actually that just opened uh, two weeks ago at IFC. Um, right. And yes, yeah, so, so I started that as an intern and kind of like worked my way up uh, as the film progressed to to becoming like an associate producer on the project, which was wild, and it was kind of like the first time that I really experienced how to make a film, like the actual like logistics behind making a film, which right. is mind blowing, but also really empowering to me. And, I think, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, oh, I was just going to say, because I think when you're acting, you, you kind of just see it from the other side of the, of the lens, don't you, as it were, you, you don't see the, the logistics of what brings it all together. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, like when you're like, when you're watching a film and thinking about how that film is made, it can be very, very overwhelming to consider, you know, I mean, like, there's so many, so many moving pieces that need to come together to make the film right. happen. Um, but actually right. seeing that people physically, like, real people physically make movies was, to me, like, the, like, oh, wow, that, that's it, you know, like, anybody can do mm. this because people are doing it. Definitely. Um, and I think that kind of combined with, like, you know, the empathy that you have to have as an actor for for other people and for other characters that you may be playing translates directly into work as a documentarian. Um, you know, you, you have a subject that obviously isn't you, and it's like, how can we bring that subject closer to understanding each other and therefore understanding, you know, and therefore the audience kind of understanding them too. Absolutely. Um, so I, I think, think empathy plays a really big part in that. And I think trans people have really come to the fore of of, of uh, the community in the, in the past few years. I mean, I was thinking when I was researching for this show how, like, even 10 or 15 years ago, um, they didn't even include T in the LGBT. It was uh, 
uh, LGB community, and now it's the LGBT community, and, and I'm totally for all in- inclusion, but now they've even kind of gone a, a stage further and they say L- LGBTQ, uh, which, mm-hmm. which I thought was queer, first of all, and then I looked into it more, and, and it's questioning. So, you know, for me, uh, I, thought, I would have thought that the LGBT, L- LGBT covers everybody. Even if you're questioning, you are, you've got to be one of the above, but I, I guess I'm, I'm coming around to seeing that that if it if it includes if, if it helps to uh, provide inclusion for everybody, then, then then that's cool too. But the trans community and the gay community were not always kind of how can I put it? In, mm-hmm. Yeah, they weren't. Not, not that they weren't. Always. Yeah, and, 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 and that's kind of concerning because we, we are part of that. We, we are all part of that community. Um, and I think that, that, that when, when these issues become mainstream, they tend, to, uh, they tend to get people talking and questioning, which I think is good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think there's like a lot to unpack with, with, uh, with that statement, too. I mean, like... You know, it, it definitely became politically advantageous for the trans community to attach itself to what was going on in the gay and lesbian movement in the 70s, because you know there were there were certain rights that were um, th- that were consistent, you know, in in all parties basically. So as soon as like the trans community kind of joined with like the the L G and kind of the B community, um, right. then the a- then the acronym started to include them too. But I, I also don't think that there's going to be any sort of acronym that, you know, uh, that speaks to all sexualities no, or, or even no. all queer sexualities. No, um, because no people, absolutely. You know, yeah, because, because there are also issues of gender, and there are, also be, there are also people who consider themselves things that are not gay, lesbian, bi, transgender, queer, or questioning. Yeah, I, I, um, I, know, I know some people that are, are trans people who consider themselves to a have been born in the wrong body and 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 b because they sleep with people who are of the same sex that they were that doesn't necessarily make them gay but i i just have this rule that i don't make labels for people i think they need to make them themselves and then i have mm-hmm. to just respond accordingly to that you know cuz like i um a friend of mine in, in london um had had a, a a sex change operation and i went through them with that and it was, it, to begin with, it was very confusing when I'd known the person as a he for so long to stop saying he and saying she. But, you know, those things kind of, those things kind of fall off very quickly. That was mm-hmm. probably the wrong, the wrong phrase to choose, but, I mean, your terminology changes quicker. Definitely, definitely. And, I mean, the, the thing about that acronym, too, the thing about the LGBTQ acronym, is that uh, the the important thing to keep in mind is that when it comes to trans culture, that it's not necessarily somebody who's trans, that that isn't necessarily a comment on their sexuality. That's a comment on their gender. No, Um, no, absolutely. They're talking about their gender when they, they, and of course gender and sexuality hold hands, they're related. But, um, you know, there, there there are plenty of trans people who would consider themselves heterosexual too, which is important to acknowledge. I, and 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 I would fully I would fully support that because I, who who am I to tell someone what they are you know exactly. hell I don't even know what I am some days so how can I tell anybody else what they are you know <laughs> exactly so exactly. Antonio tell me where the title comes from Mala Mala because it's not really the words are not kind of like uh, uh, prevalent in society are they Spanish words are they where do they come from um, well Mala Mala is. Uh... Well, it's something that we found to be an empowering title. It literally means bad, bad. We translated into English. Um, but since the day that we started filming these girls, we noticed that when they would meet up with each other at the clubs or they would get off stage after a performance that everybody liked, they would say, estoy mala, 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 and they would repeat it. And what that means is it's a word that's been appropriated from biological females which is used here when they have their period. They say, estoy mala. So these girls have right. appropriated and used it in an empowering way, expressing, right. you know, that they're excited and that they are in approval of something else. Right. So one of the, one of the most concerning things I find about the experiences of, of, of trans people and the trans community is the amount of violence that's, that's directed at them. And, and I know that, like in the UK, they've set up special task forces to ad- uh, assist the LGBT communities and come down heavily on these offenders. Is, is, did you did you identify 
uh, people among your subjects that, that had experienced violence and, and, and how is that being responded to by the local authorities? Well, just last night, actually, we were with a few trans sex workers um, talking to them. And something that, they, that happens to them is that a lot of clients who are curious about them or people on the street who are curious about them will drive by them and um, take t- uh, toy water guns and fill them up with Clorox or bring rocks and sometimes even My guns God. and just to mess with them um, out of some sort of repressed anger will shoot at them and, and play around. And what, they, what the girls refer to as just playing around with them. Um, so we've definitely had subjects who are in the middle of the violence and who right. are friends of, of people that have been publicly known here to have been killed or have gotten hurt. Wow. Um, in terms of the, the island's response to it, that's a big problem um, because... There, there's because a lot of the cases go unreported because of the categories that are used to refer to these to these girls. A lot of them end up being classified as just gay men who have sex with men. Um, right. So sometimes when some of these girls get hurt, it just ends up in the news as just a boy on boy problem. So it doesn't yeah. receive the attention that it needs. It clearly isn't. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. No. I, I think Dan probably has something to say about this. Well, yeah, and, and also the other thing, too, is, I mean, just to, just an example to, to kind of illustrate the relationship between trans violence and public policy on the island. Um, in 2011, like, the Department of Justice came to Puerto Rico, and they were like, listen, you guys are underreporting your hate crimes, and we, we, right. we know this. And uh, the government in Puerto Rico pretty much responded by attempting to pass legislation that would kind of uh, remove uh, sexual orientation and gender identity from the list of uh, things that would kind of denote hate crime. Right. So so essentially, if you killed somebody for being gay, it would just be murder. There wouldn't be that extra offense of it being a hate crime. Um, and to me, that that's that's a really good example of kind of uh, the dynamic on the island between, you know, the violence that is occurring and the public's response to it. And right. this is all in addition, to to, you know, the emotional and psychological abuse and torment and violence that occurs every single day in uh, our subjects' lives, you know. Right. I, Ivana, who we were shooting last night, she's, she's a trans female, and she does outreach work. Um, and this was, like, I guess, about four months ago, but uh, I think it was like something like 12 to 15 undercover cops, they weren't wearing uh, uniforms or anything, broke into her apartment without a warrant because somebody allegedly said that she had drugs. And they broke into her apartment, broke a bunch of stuff, tore it apart, found no drugs, and, and then left, and then just, like, left the apartment in disarray. And, uh, and took the, the money. Yeah, exactly. Took the money? And, and on the 10th, yeah, yeah. And on the wow. 10th, um, she's actually going to court to, uh, it's her first court date to actually sue the uh, Puerto Rican police department um, Quite for, for everything right. that occurred. Right. And so, that, so that's huge, too, because, like, that's never, that's never happened on the island where a transsexual has kind of taken, <laughs> taken a stand and taken, taken the police to court and actually held them responsible for, for the atrocities that they committed. Too right. It, it's, it, I, I think it's an imperative for people to stand up to authorities when they, uh, when they treat them, them badly and outside the realms of, 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 of what is legal. Because I, I, I actually think it's a lot deeper than that because, you know, obviously Puerto Rico is part of the United States of America and I'm part of uh, a lot of equality issues uh, in the United States are, are due to the fact that uh, Washington won't make um, human rights a federal issue and leave it to the individual states, which to me is like saying it's like letting your second cousin twice removed write your will. Definitely. I mean, it's it's like looking at the kid being beaten up on the playground and saying somebody should do something about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, you know, and and that and that is kind of like the nature of of these issues and how they play out politically is. I mean, we we have yet to see, but you know, a, abortion up until the seventies was a state by state issue. So yeah. slavery was a state by state issue. You know, so women's suffrage was a state by state issue. Yeah. So, the, so there are so there are issues that, that have a history of of, uh, you know, politicians kind of catering to states' rights, and then, you know, years later, that being completely overturned and it becoming a federal law. So we'll, we'll see right. how that goes, definitely. Right. But I, I, mean, I, think I think change is always... Go on, sorry. 
Oh, no, no, I, th- I think that just going back to the violence, the issue of violence, I mean, like, you know, a situation like Ivana's, like, she wasn't physically harmed, you know, during, during any of that. But uh, to me, I think it, it strikes somebody deeper to not have, you know, superficial wounds sometimes. Because yeah. now she's going back to her apartment, now she's going back to her home, the place that she lives, with the knowledge that it could be broken into in the next 15 minutes if the police decide that they want to do that. Because they, they know who she is, they know where she lives, they know how she identifies. She is, she's a face in the community. So I think that that has to be terrifying because that's day after day after day after day. That's not being beaten up once on the street. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so there are, there, there's a lot of other violence, too, that occurs uh, beyond just physical. Right, right. I mean, I, I, I think it's very scary that, that anyone gets to to vote on what the rights of any other individuals are, because rights are exactly what they say they are. They're not privileges; they're rights. So why should anybody be fucking voting on 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 how on on how my rights are are affected, or how they're um, how they're uh, perceived, or or how I get to stand up to them? These are not things that should be voted on. You know? Definitely. I mean, but we but we do have to acknowledge that we still live in a puritanical society. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we do, um, yeah, we do and, absolutely. And, and that sodomy and homosexuality and <sighs> lesbianism you know and, homosexuals and genderism, you know, they, they are they are sinful in the minds of so many people and they have been for longer than they have been okay. Than they have been But you know it you know what I for mean. Me, for me for me, it actually goes back to this issue of separation of church and state. If we do have separation of church and state, don't force your pur- puritanical bullshit down my throat about what you think is right and wrong or what you think about another person's life is a right and wrong based upon religiosity because that's not what we're founded on. If there's a separation of church and state, let's keep it separate. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> so... Antonio, tell me what what's impacted you the most from your experience of working on uh, Mala Mala. I think the thing that's been the most impactful for us has been. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's been so much, but I guess it's been. You know, there's there, the violence is is definitely a problem, but there's there's daily challenges that to me seem that I can connect to more, that to me seem even more important to deal with. You know, there's there's the problem with, with being trans in Puerto Rico is that it's not normalized yet in the law and daily life. So it's right. it's a challenge that is that happens to the moment you step outside of the house or the moment that you go back home. You know, go to the doctor, how do you get your hormones if you're still if they still consider you a male on the in and your healthcare card, you know. Right. How do you get a job? What are your options if you can't get a job? Who are the men that are approaching you, and and, and what do they want from you? You know, what are the, what are the, what are you, what are your implications for, for your future when, when you decide when you commit to a trans life in the island? You know, what are the right. opportunities? You know, and I think to me, meeting a group of people that, that have these daily challenges and still are so accepting of each other and so happy with their lives and not looking to change them and not looking to be something else but committing to themselves and being themselves every day, to me that's been incredibly inspiring because, you know, it makes me think, you know, wow, what, you know, who am, how could I ever doubt myself and not be myself when these right. kids that I've been have been so open with us and telling us about all their other challenges but not really complaining, so, you know, just, just just really telling it like it is. And being like, so this is what's up, and and we, we just we just deal with it, right? So is homosexuality more accepted in Puerto Rico than 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 trans trans uh, sexualism or transgenderism? Would you say or or I mean, is, I is it the, the community that we are dealing with? Um, it's huge, you know. It, it exists in pockets all around the island. It has hundreds of people that are a part of it, but. The thing is, if you're not really seeking it out, if you're not part of the community or you're looking to understand it or be a part of it, then you don't really get to see it because it happens, you know, inside clubs. It happens inside homes. Online, right. on Facebook, it has a bigger public presence with everyone together. But, you know, if you don't really care for it, you don't have to see it. 
So I think it yeah. really operates that way. When we speak with people who aren't part of the community or part of the documentary, they almost, every time we leave the house to go shoot, they almost speak to us like we're going to another country. They're like, oh, we'll talk wow. when you get back. You know, yeah. we go over <laughs> You're there really going to talk to those people? Something. Sorry? No, no, no. I was just being facetious. You're really <laughs> going right. to talk to those people? You talk to them? You You drink with them? Well, not so much that. It's not really the judgment. It's more, it's interesting, you know, the people, the people that are on part of the community that we're talking to, they're not full of judgment. They're just, they're almost full of curiosity. And right. they don't, and, they're, right. and they want to see the, and they want to see the community. They just, you know, they, they almost don't know if they're going to be accepted by them either. Some of the, some right. people feel that way. We, we've been to, we filmed at clubs where we've had friends who are like, hey, can we come with you guys? We, we want to see what's up, you know, what, what, what it is that you guys are up to all night. So they come and, you know, and they're like, wow, I had no idea that this existed. You know, they say, oh, man, I've been here on this island for 18 years and I had zero idea that this was happening, you know. So I think it really, one of the things that we want to do with our documentary is bring it to light, you know, and bridge people right. together. That's kind of And you want to break down those barriers, point. don't you, between the, uh, between the, the, those kind of subsections of the community too, because I think there's always that there's always that level of not knowing which kind of gets in the way, which I I, exactly. I think is kind of never helpful. Because I think people are afraid to ask questions. I mean, when when my my when my friend uh, who was uh, having uh, go, having a transition from being male to to female. I, I was just, I was actually totally intrigued and, and I would ask all sorts of questions and, and she would say, no, ask me, Xander, I, I want to be able to talk about this. It's so important. You know, if I went, if I went and got a job in a travel agency, I would want to talk about that. I want to talk about my life. So I would ask questions like, so what's the weirdest thing about, you know, when you go to the bathroom and, and you, you don't have a penis anymore and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. she would say, well, it's weird when you go to the bathroom when you're drunk. Um, for the first few months, you, you take your pants down or your skirt off or whatever, and you look and your penis is not there, and there's still a shock because you've had that yeah. all of your life. And I'm like, fuck, I, I can't imagine that kind of, you know. I mean, obviously, this was something she wanted, but but still, the the transition for the for the trans person must be just the most mind blowing trip ever. Do, do you know what I mean? Well, definitely, one thing that, that one of the one thing that our subject says is that you know a human life is a life of change and growing, and right. it's something that you are born into and you just have to deal with and go through it. But some one thing that they say is like you know you have that everyone has a transformation in their life. But they right. say us as trans people, we have a second transformation that we have to go through. Absolutely. So to me, you know, when I speak to someone who, like Soraya, one of our subjects who's 65, you know, seeing someone who go through that trajectory of 65 years of a double transformation, you know, I have no other option but to be like, wow, you know, like you survived. That survived. I think, I think we have, uh, yeah. I think we have somebody uh, uh, on hold. Let me just see who this is. I think that maybe they want to ask a question. Great. Hello, you're live on Xandermonium. Hey, Xander. It's Maggie. Hi. Who? Hey, Maggie. Maggie! Maggie. Maggie. Wow, Maggie, Maggie, how are you? I'm glad you called in. Oh, my God. But when we, uh, we were talking about you at the beginning of the show, Maggie, uh, we were saying I that, that um, Dan and Antonio had made a documentary um, about you and your life and your experiences. Yeah. Um, uh, like at the top of the show, but but it's great that you've called in. So, so tell us tell us a little bit about uh, you know as much as you feel comfortable about sharing about sure. how you got to know Dan and Antonio and 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 uh, how, how these guys have impacted upon your experience. Oh God, um, let's see. It's so good to hear you, Maggie. Last... I just have to say that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you told you, Dan. I talked to Antonio earlier this week, so he's already. I, I bugged him like I called him up at, like at like at ten o'clock at night. Like, where's where's the damn documentary? <laughs> but um, he took it down, and I wanted to see it. I wanted to show someone it. But um, yeah, um, the way we met was um, the story goes. They have the story, but basically, um, I was performing at a club when I used to do drag. And it was like some drag race type show, and it was like a Madonna thing. And I was terrible. I mean, I had just flown back from Seattle for an interview from Microsoft, so I was like tired, not really wanting to do it, but you know, I had to do it because it was part of the contest. And I stunk like a, I stunk. I'm not a really good. I was never a good performer. 
Hello? So I beg to differ. Yeah. I beg to differ, but... Hello? <laughs> Did we lose yeah, hello? you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Hello? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. We're, hello. we're all here. Okay. So that was performing. Hello? And then, like... Hello, Xander? Can you hear me? I keep hearing Uh-oh. hello, Xander. Oh, it's just the three of us. Hello, I can't okay. hear anybody. Well, now, now it's our show, so... What happened? <laughs> I, so now we're gonna have Hi, I lost question. you all for a minute there. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. So I was going to say how I met them. Basically, I was doing a show. I, was, I, I blew the blew the big chunkies on that show. And um, so they came back at the end of the show, and they snuck in the back of the dressing room. Um, and they said, hey, we're, you know, da-da-da, we're in town for this film. They handed me their card, Killer Trans or something like that. I was like, whatever. And then, you know, of course, and so they wanted to take me to a different show around. And so I, you know, wandered them around Austin a little. And, you know, because everything, all the gay bars are near you. And like, we were thinking about going out in, like, the desert and doing something with cactuses. And, like, we're in a freaking hill country. There's no cactuses <laughs> in this part of Texas. But, okay. <laughs> I would have been, I I been like, right okay. in there. Let's take you into the desert and do something with cactuses. <laughs> 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 I mean, like you know, you know, they were. They, I knew they were messing with me. I knew hard they were going to be messing with me because that's what you do with me. I mean, you know, I, I know. And so they come to my house and basically I turn the tables on their little asses. I listen and said, "Yeah, I know I'm terrible. I'm horrible." And you know, and so I did the documentary. I look back at it now. I looked at it the other night and I was like, "I was like, oh my god, look at this guy." <laughs> so man, it's not like, it's horrible. So, you can see my bald spot. I'm naked in it. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, I didn't I see like, that oh, you were yeah. naked in it. But um, <laughs> yeah, do you Maggie, feel... Maggie bears all. Wow. Well, so do you feel? I won. I, I won. I strip contest now. Wow. That's not a joke. I flew into Austin two weeks ago and won the strip contest again. What you entered? Are you compared? I competed. I was a competitor. Wow. I got first place. Fabulous. Five, eight guys out. Yeah, so I'm, how, I'm, yeah, I have no problem so, getting naked. Do you feel that, um, <laughs> well, this is radio, so you don't need to take your clothes off for us right now, Maggie, but how, do you feel <laughs> that, um, what what do you feel you got out of making the documentary with Dan and Antonio? Um, do, you, do you feel like it changed you at all? Do you think it gave you yeah, more it really, it, get up and go? or? No, it really made me realize that people might actually like me. And that you right. know, yeah, I I I I dog on myself constantly, but the reality is, is here's two guys that are telling me I'm wonderful and great, and they're like are taking the time out of their life to make something about me, and you know, and and about you know this kooky, crazy, like crazed out, you know, because I mean I'm not exactly sane, I think, you know. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so, you know, you, you got this crazy, you got this crazy one, you know. And, I have to say, Maggie, they, being... they came back what? from this. Um, they'd been, they'd been to this film festival and they'd met you, and they came back and they fucking raved about you. And I couldn't <laughs> wait to see the documentary, and I wasn't disappointed in any way, shape, or form. And we became friends on Facebook and stuff, and we yeah, chat occasionally, yeah. and um, blah yeah. blah blah. And I think I what I think is amazing about um about the work that Dan and Antonio are doing is you mm-hmm. actually get a glimpse into other people's lives that you wouldn't normally get. Yeah. Mm. And I'm an odd and also you gotta remember I'm an odd doc. At the time when Dan and Antonio came to my house, I was married, you know, my house was covered in toys because my daughter's toys were scattered all over the house. And we were in my giant mega house that I've now gotten rid of, thankfully. Shay McMuffins is done. Uh, that, <laughs> Congratulations! That was not talking about. Yeah, you don't want to know how bad that was. <laughs> Six months of pain. Um, Eighteen thousand dollars later, I'm out of that house. Um, right. But um, but you know, Maggie. Um, you know, Maggie. Maggie really set the foundation for this documentary because yeah. what happened was that them. the spectacle that we saw at the club was not what we saw at the house. And that's what yeah. Dan and me realized was going to happen again and again when we took the time to get to know other people. Right. And that's really and what I think, got and us I going. Think that, yeah, and Maggie's feelings, like, when she when she was talking about us coming to her house, I mean, like, it, it, it was completely reciprocal. Because we left, I mean, we left her house, and I, 
I honestly think that, you know, meeting Maggie and and allowing her to film us and, and working with her, like, was one of the most humbling, incredible experiences that I've ever had. Like, we left Maggie's house, and, like, that was when Antonio and I were like, we need to keep doing this. Like, and, you know, that comes across in the documentary, Dan, it really does. I mean, I, I remember saying to Antonio after I saw it, I was like, I got to meet Maggie. I got to meet Maggie. And it, it's, a, it's a crazy thing that, like, you can watch uh, a documentary short and actually want to meet someone. Can I just well, yeah. wow. a little bit, Maggie? Because people in the chat room are asking a little bit about you. And, again, I only, feel, yeah, I only sure. share what you feel free to yeah, share. Sure. Yeah, um, you know they're really asking, open. are you a performer or a transsexual? So, so I'm, in, in, I'm transsexual. Right. I, I'm i retired. I basically, I'm retired from drag. Right. I mean, I you know, I'll pop up once in a while on a circuit or show, but I'm 100% trans. Right. But you're, you're, you're actually a pre-operative transsexual, is that right? No op. You're a post-operative transsexual. No, no op. Oh, no op. <laughs> right, I see. I thought you were saying no, no. <laughs> Well, well, can you can you tell us can you tell us Maggie what that means to you then to to, it it, to be a no that, op transsexual? Okay, for me it means that I live my life the way I've always wanted to live my life, as the way I meant to live my life. I live day and day as Maggie. I mean, I used to be a man and now I'm a woman, and I live yeah. every day of my life. And for me, I just basically became the true me, and that's kind of it's. I don't know how to explain it really, other than say you know. I struggled with my gender pretty much all my life, and then a few years ago I had a nervous breakdown, and at the other end came out, I finally said, I'm done. I'm done with right. these lies, and I'm just going to be me, and, you know, I'm happier now. I mean, my life is much better now. I mean, in some ways. In other ways, you know, I'm living in the, the ghettos of Cleveland, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sure it's gotten more difficult in some aspects. Absolutely. But, I mean, in other aspects, I mean... I get up every morning and I look in the mirror and I see me. I see my long hair. I see my chest. I see, you know, I'm completely shaven. I, you know, I have a feminine figure now. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm happy. So, you know? and it's like, so let me ask I'm you a question, Maggie, because it's, it's one of the points I wanted to kind of raise. But um, mm-hmm. are you, do you see a level of interdiscrimination in the trans community. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah, there's a hierarchy. Post-operative, oh, there's a hierarchy pre-operative, people who aren't going to no, be um, no-operative. For me, no, it's not has to do with, with the status. It has more to do with passability, how right. well you pass. Right. Because, you know, the, the more you pass, the less you want to hang out with the ones that don't pass as well. And there, right. there emerges this weird hierarchy of girls, like, you know, like different levels. And I'm more... I don't really hang out in trans space anymore because, you know, I'm a woman. Why am I going to hang out with a bunch of dudes or a bunch of, you know, transsexuals? I'm going to hang out with women. I'm going to go hang out with my people. You know, it's, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, yes, I mean, I have, I have, you know, I don't get along with pretty much anybody in the trans community, at least here in Cleveland. I, you know, in Austin, I got along with most sometimes. But, I mean, there's a lot of interfuting and it really – it really revolves around the line of possibility, in my opinion. I mean, this is just my right. opinion. I might be wrong. And status really implies a little, but, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of pre, but I don't know that many posts. I right. mean, I've met mm-hmm. a handful of posts in my life. I mean, I've actually, I've actually kind of seen, seen it from both sides, obviously not as a trans person, but I mm. used to be uh, quite involved um, in the trans scene in London uh, because, mm. I, because I did drag for a long time, and also I used to go and mm-hmm. entertain in a, a trans club. And I see what Maggie is saying about the, the passability because there is that level. And even amongst the, uh, the trans community, I don't know if it's the same now, but even back then, if you if you if you didn't look totally feminine, even the other trans people were 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 commenting on it. But there were also there was also kind of levels of division about she she's 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 pre op and she's post op, and it was a bit like it was a bit like these kind of. Uh, like like mm-hmm. it was very tiered, you know. Like it like at the top yeah. of the tier was those that were fully, that that had fully mm-hmm. uh, trans trans mm-hmm. uh, had the operation. That then there mm-hmm. were those uh, that weren't um, ever gonna, mm-hmm. and then in the middle there were the ones that were kind of in in the middle of it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, well, I mean, here's I'm, the thing I'm is, hoping most of my friends are no op. 
Right. It's right. now become more acceptable to be no op. And there's right. not that tier. That tier, I have not experienced that tier. The other thing you guys got to remember is, um, this was told to me when I was here in Cleveland, a guy that ran, we have an organization called Trans Family, which has been around for like mm-hmm. 20 years, that is the support community for the trans networks. And the guy that runs it, and his, his wife and his, his wife and her, her husband run it, they have a trans son. And um, that's why they started the organization, to get help for themselves. And um, he once said, eventually you stop being part of the trans community after, after a while because you achieve what you're looking for. Right. Oh, totally that's interesting. And you just disappear. And I was like, wow. And I thought about it because they lose people all the time. And he's like, it's not that we lose people. It's a lot of people, they've achieved what they wanted, and they don't need us anymore. They don't need the community right. anymore. They're, they're women or they're men. So do you think that's a good thing, Maggie, or do you think that's yeah, a bad thing? Yeah. No, yeah, I, I think mean, it's a good thing too because because if you if if you're if you're partaking in a, in in that community for a time that you need that support, I think that that's perfectly acceptable. Because I think yeah. that I think one one thing my friend used to say to me, she used to say the one thing she craved was was normality. And and I kind of mm-hmm. un- understood that from from the point of view of, of of being gay and you know even the changes mm-hmm. that have happened on that scene in the past ten or fifteen years that that, yeah. that, that you know it's it's seen it used to be seen even ten fifteen years ago uh, it used to be seen as something that wasn't normal and so I really yeah. understand that craving craving of of normality so so I really get that that I, I get that really well here's a here's here's a hilarious thing about me. Um, um, how do I put this? When I transformed, I felt normal for the first time in my life. You say, sorry, say again? I felt normal for the first time in my life. Wow. I mean, you know, but I mean, the boys can tell you. I was, I'm not exactly, um, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm not exactly, I just, I, you know, I'm not exactly, you know, I wasn't exactly a failure in life. I no. have a vaunted, respected career. I've, I've been very successful in the computer industry. Um, I mean, you know, Amazon called me, like, the other day to interview. I mean, you, you know, I, I get, I'm taught by the, some of the top-tier companies, and I'm recruited, like I said. Like, before they met me, I had just flown back from an interview for Microsoft. Right. For actually Xbox Live, actually, of all ironies. So, I mean, I have, I've always had decent money. I had a big house. I had, you know... I had a kid, I had a beautiful wife, you know, beautiful daughter. I mean, my daughter's the light of my life. I had everything I wanted. Right. Yeah. And, and yet. But I guess I it's more about that. how you feel inside, isn't it, yeah. than anything else. Yeah. And I think I think everyone can kind of associate with that on one level or another because we all kind of want to feel right, don't we? Yeah. You know? It's, it's yeah. a basic well, fundamental. Think- well, I think too. Before before we move on though, too, I think we I think we also have to like look at ter- look, look at how we're using the term normal too in this context, right? Um, yeah. Because you know a lot of people yeah. a lot of people would say to Maggie that she was born with five fingers, five toes. You know, right. the constellation matched everything, yeah. the constellation of her genitalia yeah. matched everything, so she was normal. You know, right? Yeah. And that maybe for some, maybe the, so, so that normalcy is really in the eye of the beholder. You know, like you, Maggie, you're absolutely right. Maggie telling us that she doesn't that she didn't feel normal until she really, you know, went for it and and did whatever it took to become who she who she wanted to be and who she saw that she could be. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think that that's really important to point out too. I mean, yeah. there is no maybe more, I should have clarified you know, a. a Maybe I sorry. Maybe I should have clarified a little bit more. But my, but my, for me, for me, my vision of what's normal is is actually what feels right for you. Because what's exactly. normal for me is exactly. not going to be the same for you. And I'm not going to push my normalcy on you. And nor do I expect you to exactly. to do that to me either. And I know that's a, a utopian ideology, but that that's kind of how I feel, really. Um, so, yeah. listen, Maggie, thank you so much for calling. I'm really glad you called no and you've really added something to this show. I was really hoping that you would. Hey, um, um, is there can anything you, can you guys... Can you do me a favor? And just, can you leave me on the line? Because I'm, I'm at the grocery store actually talking to you. No oh, problem. Ronnie. I will just mute you and you will still be able to listen to the show. Because I want to listen to the show because it's fascinating. But um, I guess if I had any comment, I mean, when, when you're thinking normalcy, 
One thing that I would crave more than anything is to no longer have to explain what I'm trans. To not have to go right. to the bathroom going, oh, God, please do not clock me. Please do not clock me. Please do not clock me. You know, yeah. please, God, yeah. I do not need the cops called on me. Just, you know, stop staring yeah, exactly. at me. Stop laughing at me. Stop, no. you know, treat it like it's a matter of fact. And when they're right. in mean, spaces where they treat it as a matter of fact, I'm me, and I'm comfortable. Like, when I'm at work, everybody treats it like, oh, Maggie's just a female, you know. She's a little obnoxious, annoying one, but she's a female. Right. And and it, it's a blessing. I can go to the bathroom without fear. I can, you know, everyone, you know, there's because 90% of what you do really has no gender to it. The right. only time gender really plays an effect is when you put your fucking clothes on in the morning. Oops, excuse me, I should yeah. that. When you it's put your cool. fucking clothes on in the morning and... And when you when take you them sex. fucking off. Yeah. And when you take them off and when you go to the bathroom. Yeah, absolutely. And everything else is gender neutral, believe it or not. Absolutely. I mean, going to the exactly. store, yes. You know, it, it should be acceptable. If you want to wear women's clothes and look like a dude, who gives a flying toss? That absolutely. You be, go, Maggie. That should not be the judgment. That's that was exactly. the kind of normalcy I thought you were talking about. For me to feel normal as I finally fit in society, as I perceive my place in society, that's what I finally got to feel. That's that's it. That's it. That's I mean, you know, I went from being a you know a middle class white guy to being a living on the margins white woman, but the way I want to live my life. Absolutely. You know, I'm now, you know, I have a girlfriend. I'm open about my, you know, I mean, I get to be a lesbian finally. <laughs> I didn't believe I was going to be a lesbian, <laughs> but, um, but like I said, and what I crave more than anything, and when it comes to normal and anything, is just treat us like we're human fucking beings. Yeah. Gender has nothing to do with your day to day. No. Nothing. The only time it should play is when you put your clothes on, and even then it shouldn't play. The only time it should play is when you're in the bathroom, and even then it doesn't play, really. Absolutely. Because there is no such thing as gender in most activity. No. And, and well, listen, Maggie, we love you play, very much. But, but you're going to get to we'll, these boys. We'll leave you on hold so you can listen to the rest of the show, um, and we Thanks, send you Jamie. all our love, and thank you so much for calling in. I Thanks really for calling, Maggie. So we love you. No problem. Love you too, guys. And good luck. When am I going to see the damn documentary? You know, when 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 we see the documentary, you will see the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Maggie. Right, no problem. Talk. Hi, guys. Hello. Well, I'm, I'm really glad Maggie called in because, um, <laughs> excuse me, I think I think it was great to actually get her opinion on things. I really do. Absolutely. I mean, I I haven't heard from Maggie in a, like a year now, so it was incredible to hear her voice. Yeah, I, I actually spoke to her a few days ago on on Facebook, and she said, "Would would she would she be crashing if she called in?" I'm like, "No, you you would be welcome." You know. <laughs> Hell no. Um, so let's so let's kind of go uh, b- uh, back to uh, Mala Mala. You you looked at both trans people and drag uh, people. Yes. Was there a specific reason? to look at both because most documentaries either kind of look at one or the other um, because I know that both communities kind of object to or seem to object to the comparisons made. You know, trans people would say, I'm not a drag queen, and drag people would say, I'm not a tranny. And and I'm sorry for using that terminology, but that's, you know, what what people would say. Definitely. And I think that one of the things that we realized, too, is that for a lot of our subjects, you know, I mean, their experience, they, they, are, on, they are on the battlefield. You know, they are on soldiers. Right. They, are, they are soldiers on the battlefield. And I think for, for Antonio and I to uh, kind of, like, come in and, like, peek around the corner and be like, okay, and, and try to have the conversation about what the battle is actually about is difficult for some of them. Um, yeah. But for us, and for, for us, we come up as most useful to use um, – some of the more open definitions of what transgender is, which does include right. drag queens and female impersonators, all the way to, you know, a, a, like a fully committed transsexual, if we want to look at it at, like on a spectrum that way. Right, right, um, absolutely. And, and I think that also, you know, it, our documentary is acknowledging the fact that there aren't many people who can actually distinguish between a drag queen and a trans no. they transsexual. But I think... And, I, 
Yeah. I think gay people are very good at it, though, because we live in that culture. We can, we can, like, if someone says, "Oh, look at that tranny," it's easy for us to say, "Well, actually, no, that's not transsexual. That's a drag queen, dear." Exactly. You know? But it was, it was strange um, to just, like, live, live in a world where people don't know those distinctions, but you ask, like, yeah. most Americans what the difference is between the National and the American League in baseball, and they can tell you which team plays for who, you know? Right. Well, I couldn't <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> really, I couldn't. Exactly. On, on Thanksgiving, I was made to watch, like, two hours of baseball, and by the end, I was, like, scratching my balls, and my voice went really deep. I was like, <laughs> quick, get me in front of some gay porn. No, no, that's not true, <laughs> listeners. I don't Wait, watch gay merge. porn. Only on days that end in Y. So, so Antonio, tell us a bit about uh, your Kickstarter experience because I believe you will, you've been one of the lucky uh, projects that actually have fulfilled your uh, the total that you were looking for, and and it was it was successful for you. Yeah, um, when Dan and me started this project, it was totally out of pocket, and it was. I mean, we wouldn't have it any other way now because it made everything. It just allow. It just forced us to to have everything be very upfront and raw, and we couldn't resort to to fancy lighting or anything. It was just what we had, which was I think one camera. Um, and right. then after that, we realized that we wanted to develop <laughs> our stories further, and we needed some equipment and a few more people in our crew to do that. So. Right. So we did Kickstarter and we did it for 30 days and it was the craziest 30 days of our lives and we <laughs> are so fortunate and so grateful for the hundreds and hundreds of people who helped us um, not only get to our goal but you know spread the word and also just support us in something that we started just you know quietly on our own and then they helped us spread it and make it loud so that we can get that money and, and finish this. Right. So it was, right. It, was, it was it was a great experience, and I think one of the best things that actually happened with the Kickstarter was that the community itself was like, "Oh shit, we it's not just Antonio and Dan who were maybe just like these random guys who are interested in us. There's a lot of people who think we have something to say. So I think a lot right. of them were surprised by the response and by the articles and the press and whatever, and they um. That was that was really positive in their lives. And then when we came back, you know, they were obviously more excited and they were obviously like, what the hell, you know, what's happened? So that was good. But I, I know lots of people have done Kickstarter projects and not kind of met their, uh, their, their, uh, their limits. Their Cause don't you, with Kickstarter, don't you have to reach mm -hmm. your limit to actually get the money? Yeah, exactly. yeah definitely. Right, right. I, I mean, we we set ourselves like uh, we set ourselves a very very ambitious goal. You know, it was thirty it was thirty thousand dollars in thirty days, and we had no time to kind of like sit back and like wait to see who was going to give us stuff. It was like day one was I mean it was a full time job those thirty days. You know, and day one was right. like we got to start emailing every single person that we know individually, and we got to write people Facebook messages individually, and we got to send press releases and. You know, and that and that's how we did it. You know, and the remarkable thing is that it is possible. You know, for for anybody yes. to do something like this. I remember <laughs> sitting down and making a video for you, saying um, that that you guys had, had promised if uh, if you get to the end of your total that you you would have a threesome with me. And I noticed you didn't use it in any of your fucking publications or anything. <laughs> yeah, well, it was too, actually it was. I literally downloaded that video and I said, "This is too X-rated." to use, so I just couldn't <laughs> upload it. <laughs> hey, guys, you know me. You know what I'm like. I'm, and I just I just thought it was hilarious because I just sounded like so convincing. <laughs> Anybody that had watched it would have believed that you'd made that agreement with me. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, alas, it was not to be. Um, <laughs> well, there's still time. So Go on. Yeah, there's, there's still, still time. time. I mean, th this is probably as close as I'll get to having a threesome with you both, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that, that's cool. Uh, so your project that, and is... And nothing that I do, ahead. nothing that I do I can share with my parents, not even this interview. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the project is nearly done now. Tell us what you're looking to do with the finished product and where people will be able to see it, buy it, et cetera. 
We're gonna take it to Mars, baby. <laughs> well, we're finishing. We're finishing a uh, production. It's a, it's our last twelve days here. Um, right. Kind of finishing up principal photography with our with our main subject. And uh, right. this, like, next week and a half or so, we're focusing on some trans sex workers that we met during our last trip. Cool. Because um, that that was, that's a group that, I mean, they are so, so, so intriguing to us. And uh, it, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, last night we, we filmed a bit, and tonight we're going back to one of, one of their houses. And, um, so, that, so that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, and then these next few months are definitely going to be post-production and, and editing and all of that good stuff. And then, I mean, we're going to be submitting to festivals. Uh, that, that's and, the of route course, you've been, working, you've been working with the beautiful Adam Yule again. Yes. Yeah. The, the Adam Yule is our Adam Yule. cinematographer. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I, was, I was asking him on I was asking him on Facebook the other day if if, if Antonio had managed to turn him yet. He said, Why he said not really? yet. It's gonna happen. No, he's mine. Happen. Get get in line, bitches. <laughs> um, well, the thing with Adam is Adam has definitely defined this documentary because there is a. I mean. Let's say, like, two or three girls proposed to him, and it definitely helped us get into the community. So we're very grateful to have Adam on our team. Sorry, I'm still here. I just heard something moving around in my kitchen. I was making sure it wasn't a rat. <laughs> um, yeah, well, you can, can tell them it. to I'm, get I'm in line, too. Can I say something? What? I'm swinging on a hammock, and I can see Adam blushing from here. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Is he listening? Adam, I love you. You're mine. <laughs> Check up. <laughs> you know what, I actually? I think, he's, I think, I think that he I... just quit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he nearly, he nearly ran away. Do you remember when we did the, uh, we were doing the promos for Captain Tranny and, uh, we were doing the interview. I think you was trying to run away from your apartment that day to get away. <laughs> the thing that I'm I mean, most we... excited about this about this movie is launching Adam's porn career. Right. I think that really that's my goal with Dan. That we I guess we I guess we just revealed our plans. Why wow. All we're gonna say all we're, all we're gonna say is that there's some very 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 big plans in the works for Adam Yule. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that we're like, taking care of Adam, and we're not going to abandon him with this project. You know, you know, Antonio, as well as all of my other roles, like uh, radio talk show host, actor, singer, TV presenter, I'm also available as a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you're available as a fluffer, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you uh, a couple of things that we normally do on this show with, with our guests, just to kind of... Uh, to to lighten things up and to finish uh, the show <laughs> and stuff. What? Uh, say again? What did you say? Bad. Nothing, nothing. W was this more about Adam? Because we can stop for Adam. No, 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 enough, enough, enough. <laughs> but if it's for you two bitches, shut the fuck up and listen. Um, so we usually play one of two games. We usually play with the guest, Marry, Fuck, Kill which I'm sure you're uh, familiar with. <laughs> oh and we also play uh, Quick Fire. So, so I'll be nice. I'll actually let you choose which game I play with you. What was the, so we'll what, with, what's the second game? The second game is just Quick Fire questions, but but they're all That's waiting. Let's do, let's, do the let's do the first one. Yeah. All right. No, 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 no. You get to do one each. You can't share. We don't share on this show. So oh, that's fine. We'll do one each. That's fine. So do you want to do marry, fuck, or kill, Dan, or do you want to do quick fire? I'll do marry, fuck, or kill. Okay. All right. Let's let's start. Uh, so obviously I'll say three names, and you'll say, I will marry this person, I'll fuck this person, I will kill this person. <laughs> That's so you All right, pull so. my quote out of context. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, so we can, it's so we can play it to your boyfriend on Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is the end of your career. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. Colin Farrell, Colin Firth, and Justin Bieber. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Colin Farrell was the first one? Yep. I'd marry Colin Firth. Uh, right. I'd probably... I'd have to... I'd probably kill Justin Bieber. Right. 
I think because I, I think cause it's illegal, right? <laughs> and then what is the what is the Colin Colin Farrell or Colin Farrell as they call him here? Uh, see, I, I definitely I would definitely sleep with Colin Farrell. No problem. Right. <laughs> Out of the three, okay. Out of the three, no problem. So uh, next we have uh, Chris Frenjoler, T.J. Miller, and Brad Wolak. Do you know who these people are? Is that still for me? Yeah, I'm, you're, I'm, you're doing the whole marry fuck kill game. Oh, okay, okay. So, so what were the what the first you get? <laughs> these <laughs> are the real guy people. Who has a show on Bravo, right? They are real people. <laughs> yeah, they they have a show uh, that's called Chelsea Lately. I had one of the guests on on here last week. Okay. So I'm recycling one of the, the one of the lists. So. So just go with it. <laughs> give, me, give me the names again. All right. Chris Frangiola, TJ Miller, Brad Wolak. Okay. So not knowing who any of these people are, I would probably, I would kill the first dude, marry the second, and sleep with the third? Does that sound okay. good to you? Does that, does that make the right call on that one? N- n- no, but, no, but never mind. <laughs> not, enough time, not enough time to go into why not. All right. Sarah Palin, Ann Coulter, and Hillary Clinton. Oh, I would definitely marry Hillary Clinton, fuck Sarah Palin, and kill Ann Coulter. Yep. I, everybody says no the brainer. same about Ann Coulter. I wonder why that is. I All right. have no idea why that could be. All right. Next next, <laughs> next uh, set of people. Adam Yule, Xander Gibb, and Antonio Santini. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I know who she's going to kill. You know what? I would, marry, I would marry Adam Yule in a second. Me too. Get in line. Uh, God, and now it's going to come down to you and Antonio, huh? <laughs> Dan, it's you know what, Xander? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to kill Antonio. So right. it's you and me, baby. It's you so and me. So we finally get to fuck Dan. Amazing. Look me up next time <laughs> you come to New York. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Just, don't tell, just don't tell my husband, Adam. I would feel terrible, terrible cheating on him. No, I won't. All right, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> I got to go. I'm out. <laughs> you got to go where? <laughs> Jack Nicholson, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, and Antonio Santini. <laughs> Wait, again? I actually put that down because I wanted to see if I could read Tarantino and Santini right after each other. So Jack oh, Nicholson, okay. Quentin Tarantino, uh-huh. and Antonio Santini. I would probably marry Antonio. Kill, uh, kill, I'd, I'd, I'd probably sleep with Jack Nicholson because I think that'd be crazy. Right. And then who was the third person? Uh, Antonio Mancini. Well, no, he was the one that I, he's the one that I married. Right. Antonio's so there was the Jack married, Nicholson, right? Quentin Tarantino, and Antonio Mancini. Oh, then I killed Quentin. That's it. I, w- I would have to kill Quentin. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one. Oh we're, making, we're making hard how fucking many, work with this. I'm, I'm sweating here. Gavin Rossdale, Robert Pattinson, and Will Smith. I don't know who I know who the, I know who Robert Pattinson is, but I don't know who the other two are. Gavin Rossdale is a British singer, and you don't know who Will Smith is, the Fresh <laughs> Prince of Oh Will Smith, no I hair. Know Will Smith. Okay, so I would uh, I'd probably sleep with Will Smith, kill Robert Pattinson, <laughs> and then marry the third dude I don't even know. All right, all right. Let's let's see if let's see if Antonio can be a bit more creative with this. Let's try with you, Antonio. Because <laughs> Dan, you're just not half as fun as I fucking thought you would be, dude. All right. Nobody has told me that I suck at the fuck Mary Kill game. <laughs> I didn't know right. you'd be bad at that game. <laughs> all right, then, Antonio. Brutal. Adam Sandler, Chris Noth, and John Goodman. <laughs> well, I only. What's the first one? Adam Sandler. Okay, I would only Adam Sandler. I would just no, do all of them with him. No, I'd God, you guys him are first. just not good at this fucking game. I, I, I'm glad you guys are better at acting and directing than you are at the marry, fuck, kill game. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. All right, let's I'm try right. one more with you, Antonio. <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Dorn. What do you mean? You only get two? Well, I have to, like six. <laughs> what? I'm, you I'm asking, two, you're I'm asking him some more. All right, Antonio, <laughs> Stephen Dorff, Seth Rogen, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I would kill Seth Rogen. I would sleep with Arnold before he gets older. And <sighs> Stephen Dorff I'd definitely marry because he's good in that movie somewhere. Right.
right. Okay. All right. Adam Levine, <laughs> David Bowie, and Kevin Spacey, Antonio. Oh, man, man are worst choices. What is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to put <laughs> you on the spot. Yeah, that's the know, whole like, thing with him, right? Like, that's part of the game? That's the whole, that's the whole idea of it. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't... I don't know. They're so uninspiring. Kevin Spacey, like, I don't know. I haven't thought about him since that movie he made. He hasn't thought about it since he masturbated, masturbated, but no, forget it. I can't even (laughs) talk. All right, Dan, let's do one with you. Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, or John Boner? Oh, okay. Well, definitely, I I definitely have to sleep with Barack. But actually, no, I'd probably sleep with Joe, marry Barack, and definitely kill Mitt Romney. Right, okay. I would just sleep with Obama. Yeah, just just sleep with them all. <laughs> Fuck it. But, but if you're married to them, then you're sleeping with them, right? Like so you, one can assume. Or does or does marriage come with like chastity? Oh God! Do you know why do they have to play this game with fucking filmmakers? They have to like analyze every single question. <laughs> all right, let, let, let final fucking final uh, marry fuck kill before I go slash my wrists and call it art. Um, <laughs> ben Stiller. Dolly Parton and Christina Aguilera. This is for Dan. Better, how uh, old are oh you? Who are, who are I you? I would love to marry. People? I would love to marry Dolly Parton, sleep with Christina, and then kill that third person. Ben Stiller. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely kill Ben oh, Stiller. Oh god. Well, let's see if you do any any better on the quick <laughs> fire questions. We'll do half for you, starting with Antonio, and half for um, uh, Dan. And let me just I should clarify get a quarter for you. Quick fire means like your first answer, not let's break it down and talk about the semantics of every little fucking bit of it, okay? <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Oh All right. Uh, I know I'm really dominant. I'm the same in the bedroom. All right, Antonio. Boxer briefs uh, or tidy whities Boxer briefs. Astroglide or KY jelly? Neither. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? Saliva. <laughs> Saliva. Oh, you're a spit and chef guy, are you? All right. Coffee, fresh or instant? Fresh. Uh, Fox or CNN? No TV. No TV? God, you're definitely not gay, are you? All right. Final question for you, Antonio. Obama or Romney? Obama. Obama. All right. Uh, Dan, Obama yeah. or Romney? Uh, I don't know who either of those people are. You don't know who Barack Obama is? You just said you wanted to sleep with him, but you don't know who he is? His name sounded kind of funny. (laughs) So Barack Obama or Mitt Romney? Barack, Barack, Barack. Okay. Right. Pink or shocking pink? Uh, Wait, say that again? Pink Pink or or shocking pink? Oh, pink. No, pink, the color. Or shocking pink. Oh, yeah. Pink. Mickey D's or Burger King? Uh, I guess Mickey D's. (laughs) Oh, my God. Threesome or orgy? (laughs) I'm I'm going to go in a minute and go fucking shoot up. You realize that, don't you? Threesome or orgy? (laughs) Orgy. Right. Okay, Larry King or Xander Gibb? Oh, Xander Gibb in a heartbeat. You bitch. Killer Tranny or Divine? Ooh, ah, they're kind of one and the same, but I, I got to go Killer Tranny. Okay. SNL or Chelsea Lately? Um, recently, <laughs> Chelsea Lately. Right, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm actually vying for a, a position on the uh, round table. As, as I had, I had um, last week, we had Jiffy Wild on the show. And um, nice. I'm hoping to get a foot in the door there. That would be really good to be on that show. You, you would be for, great on that show. I would love it. I would absolutely yeah. love it. So tell tell me, guys, what what's next for you? I know you've got to kind of get um, Mala Mala all, mm-hmm. all done and dusted and packaged and sold and stuff, but what are you going to do after this is over? But didn't you actually, weren't you just in a movie, Dan, or did I imagine that? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm still filming that movie. Actually, it's taking, uh, right. it's taking months right now. But What, what, uh, what it's, movie it's is a it? Film adaptation, it's a film adaptation of Spring Awakening. Right. Um, so I'm playing this character called Moritz. And, uh, and yeah, I have like two and a half scenes left to film. So I'll probably be filming them 
hopefully starting the 16th of January. Right. And do you play someone gay in this or not? <laughs> uh, no, he's a straight character. He's a straight character. In the, he shoots himself in the face. Because <laughs> he shoots himself in the face. Wow. That's, yeah. that's kind of concerning. Actually, I was I was doing an interview yesterday, two days ago, with an actor who who happens to be gay, and we were saying how often um, that uh, directors and producers uh, always cast gay people as gay, and they forget that you know obviously it's acting, so you can play a straight person or a gay person. Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you you can you can play whatever kind of characters you can play. Great. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I would necessarily be the best gay character or, or in some instances, the best straight character. It depends on who the person is, definitely. Right. So, what, so That's for instance, would you... political would, answer. Would, would you, <laughs> you get off the fence, bitch. Um, what, um, what, so you wouldn't do porn with Adam or Yule, then? You would, would you... Uh, if, if Antonio called you on Monday and said, I'm going to make a porn film after Mala Mala, and I want you... Xander and Adam to do a three way. Would you? I never, I never said that. <laughs> well, I didn't say I you mean, did. I said if you did. How big is the budget? How big is the budget? How, and how what big does is my, what? what does my pay look like? How big is what? How big is the budget? <laughs> and, and what's my, and what does my paycheck look like? Right. That would be your first. Yeah. Actually, that's really true. I mean, some people have said to me about roles that I've played in the past and said. You know, oh, why did you play this role or why did you play that role? You know, if you're an actor and someone says, hey, come do this and we're going to pay you for it, you know, sometimes the the actual amount of money you pl- you're going to get paid um, overrides the role. And, and and I don't have any qualms in saying that, really. Do, do, would you agree? Or, Definitely. You yeah, know, I mean, I, sometimes I, like, you have to suck it up and do an under five or, you, do. you know, that, that commercial that you don't necessarily – that you're not passionate about, but, yeah. you know, it is paying the bills. Definitely. <laughs> But I think I I kind of think sometimes things things actually do surprise you that that you do a project and you actually really get a lot more out of it than you actually think you would. Exactly. Who's Definitely. who's whistling in the background? <laughs> uh, I think I think you may actually be hearing the frogs that come out at night in Puerto Rico. They're called coquis, and they they only they live on this island and somewhere in South America, right, Anthony? Yeah, they're from Puerto Rico. Right. Well, all the best people are. Let's face it. No, that's yep. true. So, so tell me, um, we're, we're going to be drawing to a close now. Before we lose the audience altogether, they're they're probably all shooting up heroin as we speak. Um, <laughs> Dan, what what do you, what um, Antonio even? What are you going to be doing after Mala Mala? Do you have any idea? <laughs> do you have any inkling? What? Uh, yeah. Um, and does I, it involve Xander Gibb by any chance? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. Anyway. All right. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Come on, tell us. No. There's uh, there's two things that I really am excited to do after this documentary. There's another documentary that I want to do about New York, and there's also a uh, something that's not related to film which is a virtual university that I've been planning with my friend Sarah Chow and Miriam. And that is about um, the first online school about the Internet. And we're really excited to launch that in 2013. Um, So not related to film, but something that I'm, I'm into. So answer me one more thing, both of you, before you go, because uh, because when I've been doing my research, I was discussing the subject matter with somebody, and they challenged me um, about something. They said, if I met a guy, and, and I thought he was really nice, and I actually found out that he had been, uh, he was a transsexual, uh, would, would, would it make a difference to me? Um, and, and I, and I was not at all surprised at my answer because I said no, because I actually, when I lived in London, I dated someone that was, uh, transsexual, um, Mm -hmm. because for me, it was more about the person than what they'd been or what they, you know, what they had been before. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely, I definitely think, uh, I mean, my view of them obviously would change they, they they have a different history that i was not really aware of you know right so like i think i think on a on a 
maybe more superficial level, definitely things would change. But you know, when it comes down to it, like love is love, and you gotta you gotta take what what some what anybody's gonna give you. I'm I'm not gonna say a word at that point. I'm gonna be very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hold off on that one, Xander. <laughs> well, listen, guys. It's been really great uh, having you on the show. Um, tell uh, tell people where they can find you um, on Facebook and Twitter and such. Um, I, I've got links to both of you on the posters, but are, are you are you uh, on? You're on Twitter, are you, Antonio, as Dan and Antonio still, or do you not use that one anymore? I I use Instagram. I'm you use Twitter. Instagram? Yeah, we're not talking yeah. about your naked picture collection now. We're talking about how people can contact you. Well, you can <laughs> contact me on Instagram. Right. Oh, I didn't know you could actually contact people on Instagram. That's new to me. Um, so <laughs> what about website-wise? You have a website, don't you, Dan? Uh, yeah, I, I have dsickles dot com. That has an email address uh, that will link directly to me. And um, yeah, I mean my Facebook also has an email address that, that people can write me at. And my Twitter slash Instagram handle is dan underscore sickles s i c k l e s. That's very and, original. Uh, yeah, super super duper original. <laughs> I want to okay, say before well, we go. I want to say before we go um, that everyone should follow. Supo Kupo on Instagram. Which is, that's my is boy. That you? I love him. No, that's my boy. Oh, that's your boy who I have yet, um, yet to meet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Supo Kupo, baby. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you so much. Um, it's been a pleasure spending the last hour and so uh, with you, uh, good luck with Mala Mala. I really hope that people go out there and buy it. And I would really love to see it on maybe Logo or or one of the channels that's a little bit more enlightened, shall we say? Mm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It would, it would be well, really good to see. Well, you will definitely be one of the first people to hear when it's completed. And, Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you have a premiere like we did with the other stuff that we did. That would be great. That was Definitely. really exciting to uh, to come along to the premiere and stuff. Of course. All right, well, Antonio Santini and Dan Sickles, you've been fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, and I look forward to speaking to you both again very soon. Uh, Thank you so much, Enjoy the heat and the sunshine. We're very envious of you here in NYC where it's freezing fecking cold. Thank you, Dan Sickles, <laughs> for joining us. Yes, thank yes, you, thank Dan you, Sickles. Antonio Santini. Thank you, Sexicles. <laughs> and Adam pleasure. Yule, I love you. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you, Dan. Enough Take damage. Care. Well, that's the end of yet another episode of Zandemonium. Uh, thank you again to my guests, um, Antonio Santini and Dan Sickles. Um, check them out on uh, Twitter and Facebook, too. Their movie, Mala Mala, will be coming out uh, very soon. They're just uh, working on the last portion of it. Uh, thank you to everybody in the chat room. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks to Joe, Carly, uh, Marvin, Guest14232, and everyone in the cult of Jake have just been reminded to give you a shout out. Don't forget uh, to check out uh, Time Out Seat, which should be happening right after this show if it's on this week. And every Saturday you can catch my sister from another mister or my brother from another mother even, uh, Jake Pentland on the Jake Pentland Show. Uh, uh, 1 p.m. Saturday, uh, 4 p.m. EST. Uh, I hope to see you all very week, uh, next week, and uh, I love you lots. Thank you very much, and goodbye.